Okay, so um, we will be discussing paper three for this video, where it is from May June two thousand thirty uh twenty three paper three one. Okay, so we will start with question number one first. They want to solve this equation that involves the exponential function. Give the answer correct to three decimal places. All right, so um, for this question, right, if let's say you able to see clearly, you can treat actually the e power two x uh, as a variable y let's say that okay you can actually treat it as a y then it will be easier for you to look at the pattern of the y okay so i let y equals to e power 2x i will have 3y minus 4 over y equals to 5 okay then i want to solve this equation i'm having 3y squared minus 5y minus 4 equals to zero so very easily you can see that it is a quadratic equation right 3y squared minus 5y minus 4 equals to zero therefore when i want to get the value for y i have to use my uh the method uh, how we solve the quadratic equation you can factorize it if you want or you can use the quadratic formula for this question we are not able to factorize it therefore you have to apply the formula so it will be negative b negative negative 5 plus minus b square minus 4 ac so b square minus 4 a is a 3 c is negative 4 divided by 2 a so 2 and then a okay so by right from here you should get two value for the y where y can be equals to a long value okay and of course i will get another value y equals to negative 0 0.591 okay of course uh, it is quite long uh, i will just keep it like this and then this is not my final answer yet uh, because our original question it is about the e power 2x therefore you need to solve for the value of x therefore i change the y become e power 2x again so now i try to think a way okay to solve for this equation and get the value for x uh. Right, so same thing happened for this second value here, e negative 2x, also e power 2x equals to negative 0 0.591. Okay, then to solve for this 2x, uh, basically I need to take ln for both sides. When I take ln both sides, I will have 2x equals to ln and the long value here. So that, after I get the long value for ln this value, 2.257, then I divide my answer by 2 and from there I'll get my answer for x uh, which is if the long value should be this one after divide by 2 and of course I have to correct my answer to 3 significant figure right so it will be 0 0.407 okay so this is my one of the answer for my x uh. and then now I have the second equation right I have to try and solve this part also and to get the e, uh, to get the two x, to get the x, I need to take ln both sides as well. So when I want to take ln for both sides, right? And if you try to press calculator, you will realize that this is actually a mass error. This whole term on the right hand side, ln negative value, is a mass error, and that's why we will ignore it uh, because we can't get any solution from this part. So we will ignore the answer from this equation. Okay, therefore, we are, we are only having one answer here, which is x equals to 0 0.407, correct to 3 significant figure. Okay, so now we come to question number 2. They want us to sketch the graph of y equals to modulus 2x plus 3. Okay, so usually before I sketch the modulus function, what I do is like I will try to draw the original function first without the modulus sign, where I want to sketch this one first, y equals to 2x plus 3. Okay, so to plot the graph, to sketch the graph, I will let I will try to find out the y and x intercept. Lah. I will let y x equals to 0 first. And then the value of y that I get is a 3. And then if I let y equals to 0, and then the value of x that I get will be negative 3 over 2. Okay. Then I will try to draw it. So I will, maybe um, when you are trying to sketch the diagram here, right? what you can do is that you use the ruler to measure the ratio that you want to use. And then for me, I'm using this. Uh, this is one unit, maybe one cm for one unit, then two, then three. 
I'm having negative one, two, and also negative three. Okay, so my x intercept is negative three over two, which is 1.5. So should be somewhere here. Okay, and then my when x equals to zero, my y intercept is a three, so it should be somewhere here. Okay, when I'm trying to join these two points together, it should look something like this. Huh? Okay, so this is the original graph. This is the original graph. Okay, then when I put the modular sign on 2x plus 3, right, the negative part of the graph, I want to reflect it up, become positive. Okay, therefore, my modulus function uh, should look something like this. Uh. So when I reflect it up, I assume that uh, it will be somewhere here, at negative 3 and 3. Then when I want to sketch the point, it will be going up here. So this is the basic shape for a linear modulus function where it looks like a V shape. So the original one is this one. Okay. And this is a V shape here. Then don't forget to label your X and also the Y axis and label your diagram. Y equals to modulus 2X plus 3. Okay, so for me, I will encourage you to show out the x and the value for x intercept and also the y intercept in your solution. Okay, all right, so this is uh, what we get for first part. Then now let's have a look for the second part. Okay, so for second part, they want us to solve this inequality where 3x plus 8 uh, is greater than modulus 2x plus 3. Okay, so to solve for this inequality, before I can solve it, I want to find out the intersection point first, which is the value of x, or we'll call it as critical value. So how to find the critical value, basically, we ignore the inequality sign first, we let it equals to 2x plus 3. And then for a modulus function, you can write into two parts, right? One part is the original 2x plus 3, another one is the reflected part, where I will write it as negative 2x plus 3. And if I try to solve, the value for x uh, of x uh, for this part, <laughs> I'll have x equals to negative 5. And then for this part, if I try to solve for the value of x, um, by right, I will have something like this. x should be equals to negative 11 over 5. Okay, so this is the basically the critical value that we have uh, when I try to solve this um equation with the modulus function okay and after that now i want to decide uh, what is my what is the correct range that we should accept so that we will have our uh, inequality fulfilled that means i want to check and see at what value of x i will have 3x plus 8 greater than modulus 2x plus 3. okay so from here there are many many different ways that we can solve it Okay, for me, what I will do is that I will check it part by part. Okay, so I will check it part by part means that I will try to list out the value of my critical value of x that I get. So I have two value here, which is negative 5 and also negative 11 over 5. Okay, so when I draw it on number line, right, I'm having three parts of, uh, three different parts uh, in on a number line. Okay, I have this one is the first part, this one is the second part, this one is the third part. So the negative 5 and negative 11 over 5, I get it from the critical value by solving the inequality, letting it equal, uh, become the equal sign. Okay, then now how can I check it? So for this part of the equation, for this part of the value, you can use any value that's more, less than negative 5. So as an example, I will let x equals to negative 6. And I substitute it into my inequality here where I will have 3, then negative 6 plus 8, greater than modulus 2, negative 6 plus 3. Okay, so if I try to solve the equation, right, left-hand side will have negative 10. Then greater than, you take 2 times negative 6 plus 3, okay, you will have negative 9. And then negative 9, when you put a modulus, you have a positive 9. Okay, so you will get this result, negative 10 greater than 9, when you substitute any value that is less than uh, negative 5 for the x. So you can see that this part, uh, negative 10 greater than 9, actually doesn't fulfill the inequality, right? So that means this part is not the correct answer. 
okay then you should try to check for the next part so for the next part this is what we have for the next part here okay then you should use a value between negative 5 until negative 11 over 5 so maybe for me i'm using x equals to negative 3 lah. because negative 11 over 5 is negative 2.2 so between any value between negative 5 until negative 2.2, I can use x equals to negative 3. And again, I will apply it inside. I will substitute this value inside the inequality here. So I'm having negative 3 times 3, I get negative 9. Negative 9 plus 8. Okay, then greater than modulus. Negative 3 times 2, I got negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Then modulus negative 3, you get a positive 3. So and now, uh, when you want to simplify this one, you're having negative 1 greater than 3. Okay, so do you think that this is a correct inequality or not? It is not the correct inequality, right? Okay, then we should proceed further to the third section here. So I want to use any value that's more than negative 2.2. So you can let x equals to 0 if you want, which is the easier one. Uh. Alright, so substitute into the inequality again. So 0 times 3, you get a 0 then plus 8 greater than modulus 2 times 0 and then plus 3 okay if you simplify this inequality you are having 8 greater than 3 so you can see that when i'm having 8 greater than 3 right it is actually a correct inequality that i get 8 greater than 3 it is true which means that the correct answer for this part uh, to fulfill this inequality will be only this one where the x is greater than negative 11 over 5 Therefore, don't forget to write out your final answer. X will be greater than negative 11 over 5. Okay, so this is basically one way that you can try to consider how to check for the correct um, section that we have, a uh, correct range for the X that fulfill the inequality. Okay, and the process is, the step is, first you try to find out the critical value for the x first in this equation and then after that you check whether the inequality is correct or not uh, part by part on the number line okay and from here you can see that we have only the correct inequality on this part of the x uh, therefore our final answer will be x greater than negative 11 over 5 okay there are many other ways that you can solve this question okay to decide the correct answer so this is only one of the suggestions that you can use all right, okay, so this is how we answer question. Okay, so question number three. They want us to find the coefficient of x power three in this binomial expansion. So I think the keyword is very obvious. Huh? They already tell you that it is binomial expansion for this um, two brackets, huh? the product of these two brackets. Okay, so first of all, what I want to do is I will take three plus x multiply with one plus four x power half. Okay, so for the first bracket, uh, 3 plus x, it is power 1, right? Therefore, you no need to expand anything. It is just remain it as 3 plus x. And then for this bracket, basically, we can expand it into binomial expansion by using binomial expansion formula. Okay, uh, so I want to expand this particular bracket here with the power half 1. Okay, then again, we can refer to the formula booklet, the MF19. Uh, I think it is under the first page or second page, uh. Okay, we look for the formula for binomial series. The first one is for AS level 1, and for paper 3, we are using the second one. Okay, so maybe I can print screen so that we can refer to this one easier. Okay, then maybe I try to paste it here. Alright, so this is the formula that I'm going to use uh, to expand the 1 plus 4 x power half. So you can see that according to what we have here, you're having x. Uh, so for x in the formula is actually our 4x in the question. n is the power where our n is half. Okay? Alright. And if you want to save time, right? If you want to save time, basically you can just expand the term that you are interested. Okay, so let's say I'm having 3 plus x. I, I'm asking myself, all right, so when I'm having 3 plus x, uh, how can I get my final answer for x power 3? So that means uh, for the 3 here, if I want to multiply it with something, this particular term should be something with x power 3. Okay, and then if I want to take x multiply with uh, something here, it should be x multiply with something with x power 2. 
So that means later when I want to expand the bracket for 1 plus 4 x power half, right? You can only focus, you can just focus on getting the x power 3, the term with x power 3, and also the term with x power 2. If you found that that is too complicated for you, okay, to, to understand, then what you can do is that you expand everything here. Okay, but for me, if I want to save time, I will just focus on the term with x power 2 and also the term with x power 3. Alright, okay, so I will start now. Okay, so to get the term for x power 2, I will take n, multiply with n minus 1. Okay, so my n is half. Then my n minus 1 will be negative half, divided by 2 factorial, and then the x squared. My x in this particular bracket is 4x, so I'm having 4x and then square. Then plus, now I'm interested for the next term with the x power 3. Okay, so again, n, which is half, n minus 1, which is negative half, n minus 2, which is negative 3 over 2, divided by 3 factorial, and then 4x power 3. Okay, so I will stop my expansion here. I will only focus on the term with x squared and also the term with x power 3 because later I know that I only need these two terms to get my final coefficient for x power 3. Okay, so for 3 plus x, I just try to copy it and then try to simplify these two terms uh, by using the calculator. Right, so by right, if you didn't press any, uh, didn't do any careless mistake, uh, then you should get 2x squared and then plus 4x power 3. Again, now I want to multiply these two brackets together and I only focus, want to focus on x power 3. So to get x power 3, I will take the 3 here, multiply with 4x power 3 so that I can get a term with x power 3. And then for this one, the x, I need to multiply with negative 2x squared so that eventually I will get a term for x power 3 as well. Alright. So 3 multiplied with 4x power 3, I get 12. Lah. So 12x power 3. And then for this part, I'm having negative 2x power 3. And now I will have 10x power 3. Okay, so for this question, they're only interested for the coefficient. Okay, so to get this coefficient, you need to write out again. Coefficient means that the value in front of the x power 3. So coefficient will be equal to 10 for this question. Okay, so this is how we solve this question number three. Okay, so um, let's discuss question number four. They want us to show that this equation uh, can be written as finally this one. Okay, so this is the beginning part. This is the ending part. All right, so um, before we start, maybe we need to analyze a little bit. Okay, how are we going to get the final answer here? Okay. So we can try to observe like, what is the difference. So basically, you can see that at the starting point here, we are having two data. Okay, the trigger with two data. And my final answer here, the final step here, the equation, everything is about the data. So very easily, you can see that for all the two data here, you need to actually apply um, double angle formula okay, for the respective trigger so that you can expand it, become all the term with data only. Alright, okay, so we can start our proving part here. Okay, so let's start with sine 2x and then plus cos 2x equals to 2 sine square x, uh, sine square theta, sorry, this should be theta. Oh. Sine 2 theta plus cos 2 theta equals to 2 sine square theta. Okay, so first of all, I want to use the double angle formula for sine 2 theta. Okay, so sine 2 theta can be written as 2 sine theta cos theta. If you can't remember, you can have a look for the formula booklet provided. Okay, so all the double angle formula will be written, is written here. Okay, all right. So this is what we have. Therefore, the sine 2 theta, I will change it become 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, after that, I also need to apply cos 2 theta. Okay, so for the cos 2 theta here, the double angle formula for cos 2 theta, there are actually three different formula. The first one is 2 cos square theta minus 1. Another one is 1 minus 2 sine square theta. And after that, the last one can be cos square theta minus sine square theta. All these are provided in the formula booklet as well. Okay, so among these three, right, we need to choose maybe one of the most suitable ones so that we can save, um, we can make our step maybe slightly shorter. Okay, so which is the suitable um, 
double-angle formula that I can apply in my step here. Okay, so again, from the original equation to the end equation here, you can see that there's no um, constant, right? I mean, there's no single constant in the in the step. So that means now when I want to choose the suitable double-angle formula, right, I will try to avoid all this with one and also the negative one one where I feel that this is the most suitable one because eventually I don't have any uh, constant in my in my equation. Okay, the constant term, right? Therefore, uh, after we decide, you can put cos 2 theta become cos square theta minus sine square theta. Then the 2 sine square theta, I will bring it over, become minus 2 sine square theta equals to 0. And I think from here, right, it is quite, we can see the answer is here, quite obvious already. So I will rearrange my equation. Cos square theta, I put it in front. And then I'm having 2 sine theta cos theta in the middle. So negative sine square minus 2 sine square, I will have negative 3 sine square. Equals to 0. So this is how we actually prove, lah, okay, to from the, beginning equation to the ending part here. And then again, we know that we have to apply the double angle formula in our step so that we can expand all the two data become everything in data. All right, so let's proceed to part number B. Okay, so for part number B, they want us to solve this particular equation for zero or for data between zero and 180. So zero and 180 means uh, first two quadrant. Okay, so to solve this particular equation, right, we will use the result that we proved in the first part and try to solve it from there. So I also already start from the result that we get from first part, uh, cos square theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta minus 3 sine square theta equals to 0. So actually for all this kind of question, when in the first part they ask me to prove some result or to prove something, usually very likely uh, you will need to use it in the second part. Okay, so uh, without hesitation, we straight away apply the result. So this is the result that I proved in the first part, right? Okay, so how can I further solving this equation? Okay, you can see that I'm having cos square, I'm having sine square also. Basically, it is a quadratic form equation, and you can try to factorize them. So for the cos square theta, I can split it become cos theta and cos theta. And then for negative 3 sine square theta, right? I will try to think how to get a coefficient of 2. So maybe for me, I will need to have a sine theta here and 3 sine theta here so that cos multiply with 3 sine. So I'm having 3. Then for this one, I want to have sine and cos. Then what is the correct symbol, correct sign here? So I want to have a positive. So this one should be a positive. This one should be a negative value. Okay. So when I factorize it successfully, then from here, I'll get cos theta minus sine theta equals to zero. And then I need to solve another equation also where cos theta plus three sine theta equals to zero. Okay, so I need to solve these two equations to get my theta here. All right, so cos theta minus sine theta, I'll get tangent theta equals to one. Okay, that means you move the sine theta over, then divided by cos theta. Therefore, sine over cos, you get a tangent, right? So tangent equals to 1. And from here, I'm looking for tangent equals to 1, which is a positive value. So I only want to consider the answer for theta from first quadrant. So from first quadrant, it is actually 45 degree. You can press calculator, tangent inverse 1, you'll get a 45 degree from the first quadrant. Okay, and after that, for the second equation here, if I try to rephrase my equation, I will get tangent theta equals to negative 1 over 3. Okay, then usually for me, I will try to find the basic angle first, where I ignore the negative sign. And I try to get the basic angle from first quadrant. So tangent inverse 1 over 3, uh, you can see that I didn't put in the negative sign. Okay, so I get 18.4. Okay, then after that, only I try to look for the suitable uh, quadrant for the data that I want. Okay, so for this second equation here, I'm looking for tangent negative. So you, you can ask yourself, uh, in which quadrant tangent will be negative? So all, and then sign here. 
for all right the answer that i get is straight away the base angle and then for the sign to get the answer for the second quadrant you have to take 180 minus the basic angle so to get this data i have to take 180 minus the basic angle which is 18.4 maybe i shouldn't use the data here lah. so i use the basic angle here base angle so 180 minus base angle and my basic angle in this um, part is 18.4 so to get the data, I want to consider the answer from the second part because under the second part, tangent is negative, All right? So if I take 180 minus the basic angle, I'll get 161.6, correct, to one decimal place for my answer in degree, okay? Therefore, I have two answers for the data eventually. The first one will be 45 degree and another one is actually 161.6. Okay, so this is basically how we solve the question number four. Okay, so uh, we are at question number five now. They want us to, uh, they give us this curve, uh, the equation of a curve. And then uh, from here, I think you can see that it is implicit function, right? Where A is a non-zero constant. So first of all, they want us to find out dy dx and show that it is equal to this uh, fraction here. Okay, uh? Right, uh, so very clearly I can see that um, this is an implicit function where I cannot separate the x and y clearly to two sides. So what am I going to do now is I have to apply implicit differentiation. Okay, I'm having x square y then minus a y square equals to 4a power 3. Okay, so for the term x square y, right, you can treat x square as a first bracket, the y as a second bracket, it is a product of two functions. So when you want to apply the differentiation for product of two functions, you have to apply product rule. Okay, so for product rule, basically what I do usually is like this. I will copy the first bracket, differentiate the second, then differentiate the uh, sorry, then differentiate the first set bracket, copy the second. Okay, so my first bracket is x square, second bracket is y. Huh? So when I want to differentiate this one, I will copy the first bracket. Differentiate the second. So differentiate the one, I will get a y. Uh, differentiate the y, I will get a one. And when I differentiate with respect to x, right, I will have dy dx at the back. Okay, then plus, for this term, it is copy the first bracket, differentiate the second, right? So now I want to copy the second bracket. That means I copy the y. I differentiate the first bracket, which is 2x. Okay? So this is how we differentiate the term x squared plus, uh, x squared y, la, x squared multiplied with y. By using the product rule here okay then after that we go for this one i want to differentiate negative a y square so differentiate a negative a y square i copy the negative copy the a differentiate y square i'm having 2y and again because i am differentiating something related to y so i have to put a dy dx at the back that equals to 4a3 they already told us that a is a constant right so when you differentiate a constant you'll get a zero Okay, then if you want to simplify it in a nicer way, okay, then what you can do is like you can rephrase it. So I'm having x squared dy dx plus 2xy then minus 2ay dy dx equals to 0. So to get the answer in terms of dy dx, I will want to move all my dy dx to one side. So 2ay dy dx minus x squared dy dx equals to 2xy. I can factorize out my dy dx here. I'm having 2ay minus x squared equals to 2xy also. And so that my dx dy will be equals to this particular fraction. This is what they want us to show in the answer, in the question, right? Okay, so you can see that we are applying uh, implicit differentiation technique, okay, to get the dy dx expression. Alright, so this is what we have for part A. And now let's continue to part B. Okay, so for part B, they are saying that find the coordinate of the point where the tangent to the curve is parallel to the y-axis. Tangent to the curve means uh, dy dx parallel to the y-axis so when you're having a line that is parallel to the y-axis now that means the gradient of tangent is equals to infinity okay all right so first let us 
take out the dy dx first. So you should know that dy dx is equals to the gradient of tangent, right? So dy dx is equals to this one. We are having 2ay minus x squared. This is what we get from first part. Okay, if my dy dx is infinity, right, parallel to the y-axis, uh, when you're having parallel to the y-axis, the gradient should be equal to infinity. Uh. So how can I get an infinity value for dy dx? Eh? You have to make sure that the denominator here is a very, very small value, close, close to zero. So we will let 2ay minus x squared equals to zero. Okay, then when I let 2ay equals uh, minus x squared equals to 0, right? I'm having the equation where x squared is equals to 2ay. This is my first equation. Okay, and then what's my second equation? My second equation just now uh, is the original equation that I have. Uh, x squared y minus ay squared equals to 4a power 3. So this is my second equation. To get the coordinate for the intersection point, right, for the value for x and y, uh, you need to solve these two equations simultaneously. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I will substitute the first equation into the second equation. Okay, substitute x squared by 2ay. So that means I'm having x squared here become 2ay, and then y minus ay squared equals to 4a power 3. Then if I try to solve the equation here, I'm having ay squared equals to 4a power 3. Okay, and then y square can be written as 4a square and then when i want to find the value for y i have to take square root and when i take square root by myself i have to include both plus and minus sign so i'm having two values for y here y equals to 2a plus minus 2a okay so when i already find the find out the value for y coordinate i need to continue to find the x coordinate right okay so substitute uh to find the x coordinate, I will use back the equation number one. Since I know the y already, my right? Yeah, right. So I will substitute the y into the equation number one so that I can get the value for x. Okay, when the y is equals to 2a, what happened to my first equation? So x squared equals to 2a multiplied with 2a, I'm having 4a squared. Okay, then if I continue to solve the value for x, uh, the x here, if I take square root both sides, I will have plus minus 2a. Okay, and then when my y is equals to negative 2a, I substitute it into my first equation also. I'm having x squared equals to negative 4a squared, where we cannot further solve it, solving it. There's no solution from this part. Okay, so... We only have the answer from the first part of the equation where the points that we get, uh, the coordinates that we have is 2a, x equals to 2a, y equals to 2a, and also x equals to negative 2a, y is still equals to 2a. Alright, so this is how we actually get the coordinate all right where the tangent to the curve is parallel to the y-axis that means at these two particular point right when you substitute into the dy dx huh, you will get something like uh infinity like, or mass error okay because when you're having any line parallel to the y-axis the gradient is equals to infinity all right so this is how we solve question number five okay question number six we are given origin o point A, point B, and point C. And then they give us all the position vector for A, B, and C here. Okay, then they tell us that the quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. They want us to find the position vector of D. Okay, so since we know that it is a parallelogram for A, B, C, D, right? Okay, so maybe I simply draw a parallelogram here first. So where this is the parallelogram. Okay, and when we label the point, right, this can be A, B, C, and D. Okay, so to find the D, uh, to find the coordinate for the, the, the position vector for D, right? Um, there are many ways that, of course, you, there are many ways that you can solve it. Uh. So to me, right, to get the position vector of a certain point, 
uh, I feel that maybe we can use the coordinate geometry method uh, to solve it, which will be slightly easier. Okay, so how am I going to use the coordinate geometry method to solve it? Eh? I know that under a parallelogram, the midpoint of the diagonal are the same. So that means the midpoint of AC should be equal to the midpoint of DB. So the coordinate for the midpoint should be the same. All right. So I will use this coordinate um, geometry concept uh, to find out the position vector of D first. So I will use midpoint of AC equals to the midpoint of BD. Okay, so let's say uh, when I want to convert into a coordinate, right? So I'm having the D, which is X, Y, Z that I don't know. Then A, I will convert the vector form into a coordinate form where I'm having 2, 1, and 3. C will be... 3, negative 2, and also negative 4. And then the B will be 4, 3, and 2. Alright, then now to get the midpoint of AC. To get the midpoint of AC, I will take X coordinate plus X coordinate divided by 2. So I'm having 2 plus 3 divided by 2. Then Y for A plus Y for C divided by 2. So I'm having 1 minus 2 divided by 2. And then for the Z coordinate will be 3 minus 4 divided by 2. That equals to the midpoint of BD. So D, I will assume that it is X, Y, Z. Okay. So X plus 4 divided by 2. And then Y plus 3 divided by 2. And also Z plus 2 divided by 2. And then since they are having the same midpoint, right, I can directly compare the X coordinate with the X coordinate. Okay, so from here, I'll get the value for x, which is equal to 1. And then for the y coordinate, 1 minus 2 divided by 2, I compare it with y plus 3 divided by 2. So from here also, very easily, I will get the value for y, which is equal to negative 4. And then the last one, of course, you want to compare the z coordinate. So z plus 2 divided by 2 equals to 3 minus 4 divided by 2. Then from here, I'll get the z which is actually uh, negative 3. So since I already get the value for x, y, and z, right? It is the coordinate for the d. And of course, for my answer, I have to rephrase it, become the position vector of d. So when I want to write out become the position vector of d, it will look something like this. Uh. Either you can put it in the column vector form, 1, negative 4, negative 3, or you can put it in the ijk form where I'm having i, then minus 4j, then minus 3k. Okay, so to me, I will, I will suggest to use the concept of midpoint in coordinate geometry so that we can get the OD in the easier way. To me, this is quite straightforward, right? Okay, so this is how we solve the answer for part A, the position vector of D. Okay, so let's proceed to part number B now. Okay, for part B, they are saying that the angle between BA and also BC is theta. So find the exact value of cos theta. Okay, when we are looking for this one, right? BA and BC. Okay, so again, just now we are having this parallelogram, right? And then we label it as A, B, C, and D. And now they say the angle between BA and also BC is theta. So that means this is now the theta. Okay, when I want to find the theta, right, in a by using vector, basically I need the two vector that is going out from the same point. So the theta is actually form uh, going out from B. So I need to use the vector AB, uh, sorry, BA, and also the vector BC, okay, to help me to calculate the value of theta. But now they are interested only for cos theta. Okay, so to find out the exact value for cos theta, I have to use the, what is the formula that you can use? Uh? You can use the dot product, right? Where I have, I need to have BA multiply, uh, dot BC, sorry, BA dot BC equals to modulus BA and then modulus BC, then cos theta. Okay, so before I um, find out the cos theta by using this formula, I need to find out the vector BA and the vector BC but first. Okay, All right, so we'll start here. I want to now, first one, get the vector of BA. 
So how can I get the vector of BA? It will be BO plus OA. Okay, so for BO, just now what I get is negative 4, negative 3, and also negative 2. Your original BO is 4, 3, 2, la. right? Um, eh, where's the question? Okay, so you can see that the BOB uh, is 4, 3, 2. Therefore, BO will be negative 4, negative 3, and negative 2 in the opposite direction. Okay, right, so that's why I'm having negative 4, negative 3, and negative 2. And then for the OA, you just copy what you have from the uh, first part. So it will be 2, 1, 3. Okay, then just do a sim uh, just simplify them. You have negative 2, negative 2, and also 1. This is your vector BA. Okay, then the next one, I want to find out the vector BC. Okay, so to find the vector BC, I want to use BO plus OC. Okay, so again, BO is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and then plus OC, which is 3, negative 2, and also negative 4. You get all this value from the first part, okay? And then you have negative 5, also oh, negative 1, negative 5, and also a negative 6. This is your BC. And now I already get BA and BC. I want to apply this particular formula to find out the cost data. Okay, so maybe I can write my solution here. BA dot BC. So when I have DA, BA dot BC means that I have negative 2, negative 2, 1 dot negative 1, negative 5, negative 6 equals to the modulus. So the modulus of BA will be negative 2 square plus negative 2 square plus 1 square. And then the modulus for BC is negative 1 square plus negative 5 square plus negative 6 square and then I'm having cos theta okay then I try to simplify the dot product here negative 2 times negative 1 you get 2 okay then negative 2 times negative 5 you get a 10 then 1 multiplied by negative 6 you get negative 6 equals to when you try to simplify this value here you are having square root 9 and then when you try to simplify this value, you have square root 62. You can just press calculator and help you. And then I'm having cos theta here. Okay. Then finally, what they want us to find is to find out the value of cos theta. So to find the value of cos theta, I will get a 2, then divided by 3. I'm sorry. It is not a 2 here. 6, right? 6 divided by 3, square root 62. Square root 9 is a 3, right? Okay, therefore, my final value for cos theta is 2 over square root 62. Okay, and they're asking for the exact value, so we can just keep our answer in the search form in this way. Alright, so my cos theta is equal to 2 divided by square root 62. And this is how we solve for part number B. Okay? The keyword is exact value, ah, so your answer must be in the sort form or pi form or fraction. Okay, then let us continue to part number three. For part number three, they want us to find the area of ABCD giving your answer in this form P square root Q, where P and Q are integers. So they want us to express our answer in the sort form ah, for the area of ABCD, and after that, P and Q are integers. All right, so again. Uh, we just have a look for this diagram again. Okay, so when you want to find out the area, okay, for the parallelogram, right? Again, you know, there are many ways for us to solve it up. If I want to try and link with what they asked us to prove in part B just now, okay, we are having vector BC, vector BA, and data so that means all i actually can try uh, to use what we have just now to find out the area for this particular triangle first then after that i multiply by two okay to get the area for the whole parallelogram okay so my aim now is to try and find out the this particular area for the triangle abc okay just now i already know the length for this side 
the length for this side is actually the modulus of BA. So what is the modulus for BA that we get just now? It is a 3. Okay, and then for this one, what is the modulus for BC, the vector BC? The modulus for vector BC just now I get is square root 62. Okay, huh? then I can use all this result here to continue and find out the area. Okay, so I will start the starting part here. Area of ABCD is actually equals to 2 times the area of triangle ABC. Okay, so to find the area for triangle ABC, it is not the right angle triangle. Therefore, I can use the formula half AB side C, right? Okay, so I have half AB. That means the length for the side, which is a 3. The length for the other side, which is square root 62. And then sin c, which is sin theta in our equation here, sin theta. In the setting our question, it should be sin theta. Okay, so now my problem is I want to try and find out what's the value for sin theta. Again, to get the value for sin theta, right, we look back to what we have in part b. So for part b just now, we already know that we are having the value where cos theta is 2 over 62. I want to use this result here to and try to substitute my sin theta, okay. Since I have cos theta equals to 2 over square root 62, that means if I try to draw a right angle triangle for this particular theta, okay, so it is a, a opposite, sorry, it is adjacent over hypotenuse square root 62. Okay, so to get this one, you will need to take square root 62 square minus the 4 square. And then you take the square root again. And then your answer should be square root 58. So this length will be square root 58. Okay. Alright. Then now, I try to simplify more of my answer further. So 2 and 2 can be simplified. So I still have 3 multiplied with square root 62. And then to get the value for sine theta, I will looking for the value from here. So what's the value for sine theta? So sine theta will be opposite, which is square root 58, divided by hypotenuse, which is square root 62. So if I substitute my value here, right, I'm having square root 58 divided by square root 62. And then very nicely, yeah, you can see that we can simplify our answer, square root 62. And then my final answer will be 3 square root 58. Okay, we fulfill the request from the question because they want us to show that our answer is p square root cube. Okay, All right, so this is how we get the area for ABCD for this question number. Okay, so um, we are now at question number 7. Okay, we have the variable x and y with, which satisfy the differential equation for this one. And then they are saying that x is between 0 until pi over 4. Okay, then it's given that uh, when x equals to pi over 6 and y equals to 0, they want us to solve the differential equation to obtain the value of x when y equals to pi over 6. So give our answer correct to three decimal places. Okay, so first of all, let us try to solve the differential equation first. Okay, so to solve the differential equation, basically I need to separate the x variable all to one side and then all the variable one uh, y at one side. So if I try to separate them, uh, I should have, okay, so I will want to bring the sine square 3y over here and then the cos 2x go down, become the denominator and dx multiply up, right? So if I rewrite again, I will have something like this. So I'm having sine square 3y dy equals to 4 tangent 2x divided by cos 2x then dx. Okay, so this is the first step that we do. We try to separate the y variable to one side and then all the variable x to one side. So you can see that we are having clearly, all right, these two variables at, at each side here. And we need to integrate the equation for both sides now. All right, so before we can integrate it, we need to analyze and check first uh, what is the correct integration technique or method or formula that we can use for the equation here, for our equation here. 
Right, so let's have a look for the left hand side, sine square 3y. I cannot integrate anything directly with sine power 2. Okay, but I can integrate something with sine power 1 or maybe cos power 1. Therefore, to make the sine square disappear in my solution here, I might need to replace it by using some identity. Okay, so maybe you can try to consider to use the, uh, the double angle formula where the original one is cos and then we are having maybe 2y. Original one, I write the original one first. So the original I'm having cos 2y equals to 1 minus 2 sine square y. This is the original equation for double angle formula. One of the formula for cos 2y is 1 minus 2 sine square y. Okay, if you can't remember, you can refer back to the double angle formula provided in the formula booklet here. So cos 2a can be written as 1 minus 2 sine square a, right? Okay, so why am I choosing this sine square? It is because of in my solution here, I'm having a sine square. And I want to replace my sine square and become something that is related to cos power 1 later. Why I want to replace it you, uh, to cos power 1? It is because of I can integrate the cos power 1 directly by using the simple formula. Okay, but I cannot... Uh, integrate the sine square directly okay by using any simple uh, any any simple and direct formula la, all right okay and now my problem is I'm having sine square 3y in my solution and then in uh, the double angle formula here I'm having sine square y therefore I can try to modify the uh, angle here I want to change uh, 1 minus sine square y become 1 minus sine square 3y so that I can replace it into my equation later, right? Okay, then what happened to the cos here? Just now, when I'm having the y, okay, sine square y, then the double angle that I get is cos 2y. So now if I want to change it become sine square 3y, then the cos angle now, it should be double of 3y, which is 6y. Okay, and then if you try to rephrase your answer, right, for this one, so I'm having 1 minus cos 6y, then divided by 2. And we can actually replace our sine square 3y by using 1 minus cos 6y, okay, divided by 2, because um, later we can integrate it directly. Alright, okay, so here I will replace it, where it will become something like this. Huh? Maybe I prefer to take the half as a constant, I take it out. And then inside here, I'm having 1 minus cos 6y. And then dy. Okay, so the integration for this part should be no problem already because I can integrate the 1 directly. I can also integrate the cos power 1 directly. Okay, then now let's proceed to the right-hand side here. So for the right-hand side, uh, we need to have a look first. Uh, okay, what do we have uh, on the left-hand side and how can I integrate them? So for tangent 2x over cos 2x, um, Maybe I can try to change it become tangent. 1 over cos is actually secant. Okay, so maybe I can try to consider to integrate for tangent 2x secant 2x. Okay, if you have no idea how to integrate this one, maybe what you can do is try to um, have a look for the differentiation provided in the formula booklet. Okay, or maybe you can, you can have a look for integration if you want. Let's have a look whether our integration have or not. Our integration don't have. So maybe we can refer to differentiation. Okay, so let's have a look for the differentiation part here. Okay, double check and see. After the differentiation, under which part do I have secant and tangent? So you can see this one. Okay, that means what? That means when I differentiate secant x, I will get secant x and tangent x. So this is differentiation, right? That means if I want to integrate secant x, tangent x, I will get back the secant. This one is integration. Okay, so this is differentiation. Okay, so you can actually um, fully utilize the formula provided in the formula booklet and try to find out the possible method or result or answer. Okay, uh, so from here, I know that oh, if I integrate secant x, tangent x, then I will get back the secant x. Okay, I go back to my solution. So, <coughs> sorry, to integrate tangent x secant x huh? okay later i will get a secant secant x okay so maybe i already found the method ready okay i will continue with the next step so for the next step left hand side i will start integration integrate the one i will get a y 
integrate cos, I will have sine 6y. Then differentiate the thing inside the angle, right? So differentiate 6y, you get a 6. You have to divide it by a 6 after the integration. Then equals to, and then now I want to integrate tangent 2x secant 2x. So according to what we uh, referred just now, right? We can see that integrate tangent 2x and secant 2x equals to secant. Still remain as 2x. Uh. But because for this one, uh, it is the angle with 2x, right? You need to differentiate the 2x. You get a 2 and you need to divide it by a 2. Okay, then after the integration, you put a plus C at the back. Alright, okay, so this part is slightly trickier. So make sure that you, when you have no idea how to solve it, right, or integrate it, maybe you can have a look from the formula. Is there any hint given from that? Alright, so for us, we are using this one actually. Okay, so I'm using the result from differentiation and I know that integrate secant x and tangent x will get secant x. And then when you're having maybe the double angle or triple angle like secant 2x, tangent 2x, then when you divide, when you integrate, you will have secant 2x, then you have to divide the differentiation of the angle. Just like what I did here. Okay, huh? right. Then after that again, before I can find out the value of c, I prefer to further simplify all my equation first. Okay, I'll multiply the half into the equation. I'm having half y, then minus 1 over 12 sine 6y. Okay, that equals to simplify the 4 and the 2. I'm having 2 secant 2x, then plus c. Okay, so now to continue with this uh, question, I need to find out the value for c first. Okay, so how to find out the value of c? Okay, I will use the other color to show. Uh. Okay, so given that, we, we already know that uh, when x equals to pi over 6, I'm having the value of y, which is equals to 0. So to find the value of c, I need to substitute these two values into my equation here to get a c. So half y means half 0. Sine 6y means sine, six, sine 0. Okay, so the left-hand side will be equals to 0. Then equals to 2 secant 2x. So 2, I just copy it. Secant, I change it become cos. Then 2x, I multiply 2, multiply with pi over 6, I get pi over 3. Then plus c. So from here, if you try to simplify, you are having 2 over cos pi over 3 is a half plus c. Therefore, the value of c that I get is actually negative 4. Okay, so from here, I get my particular solution where it will be something like this, a half y minus half sine 6y. Okay, equals to 2 over cos 2x, then minus 4. Okay, so this is actually my particular solution for this uh, differential equation. Alright, then after I found the value for C already, what else they want us to find? So now they are saying, what is the value for x uh, when y equals to pi over 6? Okay, so we'll continue further down. Okay, now I already know that y is equal to pi over 6 and then I want to know the value of x. Again, I will substitute it into my particular solution okay, to get the value of x. Okay, so when y equals to pi over 6, right, substitute it inside, you are having pi over 12. Okay, then minus 1 over 12 sine pi. Okay, then equals to the value of x we don't know, right, and we want to find out, so minus 4. Okay, all right, then if you try to uh, move all your values here and there, all right, slowly, okay, so you're having cos 2x equals to 2, then divided by pi over 12, sine pi is actually a 0, okay, so this one is a 0, okay, so you're having pi over 12, then plus 4. You just try to uh, rephrase your solution, okay, from this step. You try, just try to rephrase the solution slowly, you get something like this, okay. Or maybe I directly show you the decimal number. La. So usually for the decimal number, I will keep it as long as possible. So get something like this. After that, to get the value for 2x, of course, you need to take cost inverse. Okay, to get the most accurate answer, right, I will still write it, the write out the value as long as possible. 
Okay, although I write it out short, lah, but when I press the calculator, I'm using the long value here actually. Okay, then make sure your calculator is in the radian mode and get the answer from calculator, divide by 2. So my final answer for the x should be 0 0.541, correct to 3 significant figure. Okay, and then again, a reminder, when we are having all the trigo identity or trigo equation uh, uh, to be solved, right, in our solution or whatsoever, uh, basically all the angles are measured in radian. Therefore, you have to make sure that when you press the value from calculator, right, you have to set your calculator into the radian mode. All right, okay, so this is how we solve question number seven. Okay, so now we are at question number eight. Mm, you have a function rational function and then they want us to express it into partial fraction okay so uh, if you have a look here basically you can see that we are having a linear factor and also a repeated linear factor right okay so to express it into a partial fraction i need to write the correct pattern first okay so i'm having this is the original one at 2x plus 1 and then x plus 2 squared so when i have a linear factor i need to change it become a partial fraction with this particular linear factor and then when we are having the repeated linear factor you will need to separate into two partial fraction the first one is without the square another one is with the square one okay all right so this is the first step you need to write the pattern correctly and then after that to make the denominator disappear you multiply the whole equation okay so multiply the whole equation by using the original denominator which is 2x plus 1 and then x plus 2 square so if i multiply the whole equation with this the uh, denominator right so i'm having 3 minus 3x square then the a that i get cancel off the 2x plus 1 and then i will have x plus 2 square on top then for the b part i'm having 2x plus 1 and then x plus 2 because one of the x plus 2 i already cancel right so i'm having still 1x plus 2 and then for the plus uh, the c, I multiply it, cancel the x plus 2 square with x plus 2 square, I'm having 2x plus 1. Okay, then now we need to try and figure out what is the value for a, b, and c. Okay, so first of all, I will refer to a uh, linear factor first, uh, one of the linear factor. The easier one will be this one. So I'm referring to this linear factor x plus 2 and also this linear factor x plus 2. I want to substitute a value of x so that I can make it become 0. So what do I do here is I will let x equals to negative 2. Substitute x equals to negative 2 into the whole equation here. Okay, so negative 2 squared you get a 4. 4 times 3 you get negative 12 plus 3 you have negative 9, right? So the, your left hand side is negative 9. Negative 2 plus 2 you get a 0. So this whole thing no more disappear. Negative 2 plus 2 here, okay, also become 0. So this whole thing also no more disappear. So if I substitute negative 2 here, negative 2 plus, uh, times 2, you get a negative 4 plus 1, you get negative 3. So eventually on the right hand side, you're having negative 3c. Okay, so very easily now, you can get the value for c, which is actually equals to 3. Alright, so now I already uh, find out the value of c yeah, by using one of the linear factor already. Then now I need to refer to the second linear factor. So what is the second linear factor I can use? Okay, so the second linear factor here, I can use this one, 2x plus 1 and also 2x plus 1 here. Okay, so to make this bracket become 0, uh, I will let x equals to negative half. Again, okay, so substitute x equals to negative half into the whole equation here. The left hand side, by right, you have 9 over 4, if you didn't do any careless mistake. Negative 1 over 2 plus 2. Then you square. Negative 1 over 2 plus 2 is 3 over 2. 3 over 2 you square, you have 9 over 4. So you're having 9 over 4a. Then for this one, substitute negative 1 over 2 into this bracket, right? You get a 0. So this whole thing disappears. Okay? Then the same thing happens for the third bracket here. 2x plus 1. Substitute negative half here, you'll get the bracket equals to 0. Therefore, the whole thing here also disappears. So again, very easily, you can see that on the right-hand side, I only have the uh, unknown a. Therefore, very easily, I can get the value a equals to 1. Okay, then after that, to get the last unknown b, 
I really know the C, I already know the A, I want to find the B. Okay, so just now when I try to find the C and A, right, I'm using the linear factor, so I'm having X plus 2, the linear factor, I have used it. And then for X, 2X plus 1 is another linear factor, I also using it uh, and make it become 0. There's no more linear factor that I can use again, all right, uh, to make the bracket or the linear factor become 0. So what am I going to do now is, since this is the last uh, unknown already, what you can do is you can use any value of x that you never used before. So maybe for this case to be easier, I will use x equals to 0. Again, substitute x equals to 0 into the whole equation here. 3 minus 0, you get a 3 on the left. Okay, and then 0 plus 2, you get a 2. 2 squared is a 4. 4 times a, so a is a 1. Therefore, you're having a 4. Plus, you copy the plus. 2, 2 x means 2, 0, right? 2 times 0, you get a 0. Plus 1, you get a 1. So 0 plus 2, you get a 2. So 1 times 2, you get a 2. So you are having 2b for the second term here. I don't know what's the value for b, right? So, But eventually, when I simplify, I'm having 2b. Then after that, you substitute x equals to 0 into the last bracket here. And you'll get a c. So what's the value of c that you get just now? It is a 3. Okay, and again, when you try to rephrase everything to the right or the value to the right side, your B will be equals to negative 2. Okay, all right. So after you find out uh, the final answer already for A, B, and C, usually I would prefer to write out my answer one more time uh, in the complete, in the fraction, partial fraction form. So 3 minus 3x squared divided by 2x plus 1, then x plus 2 squared equals to a is 1, right? So 1 divided by 2x plus 1. And then b is negative 2. So negative 2 over x plus 2. And also the c. c will be 3 over x plus 2 squared. Okay, so this is how we actually get the partial fraction for this particular function. Okay, all right. Then let's continue to part number b. Okay, so if you try to have a look for part number b, right? Okay, for part number b, they want us to find the exact value. So hide the keyword exact value for the integration of this function, giving your answer in this form. a plus b lot c, where a, b, c are integers. Okay, so again, since our part 1, we already changed the function into the partial fraction, right? So that means now for this question, when you want to find the intersection, sorry, integration for fx, I need to use the result for partial fraction to continue for the solution. Okay, all right. So I will have 0, 4. And then just now for the partial fraction that we get now, we're having 1 over 2x plus 1. Then 2 over x plus 2 and also 3 over x plus 2 squared. Okay, so now, for the first term here, when I want to integrate 1 over 2x plus 1, I will get ln, then 2x plus 1, divided by, differentiation of 2x plus 1, you get a 2, right? So you divide it by a 2. Okay, so again, if let's say you have no idea how to integrate this basic function, then you can refer back to the integration or differentiation part. Lah. So you can see, when I want to integrate 1 over x, I have ln x. Going back is integration, right? Yeah, so you can refer to the differentiation formula, or you can actually have a look for the integration directly. So you can see that when I want to integrate 1 over x, they tell you straight away that it is ln x actually. Okay, all right, so let's go back to our solution here. Therefore, you integrate 1 over 2x plus 1, I will get ln 2x plus 1. But because the x is not 1x, right, so you have to differentiate the 2x plus 1, you get a 2, and you need to divide it by 2. Same thing happened here. The 2 is a um, constant, so I won't touch it uh, during the integration. So now I assume that I want to integrate 1 over x plus 2. So integrate 1 over x plus 2, I'm having ln x plus 2. Okay, then of course, uh, these two values, you have to substitute in the limit 4 and 0. Okay, then now the last one. For this last term, when I want to integrate it, I have to use the basic formula that we learned in AS earlier. Where 3 is a constant, I take it out. I want to integrate x plus 2 power negative 2. Okay, 
and then of course I have to I want to complete the last term here like, for the integration before I can find out the value okay so 3 is a constant I just copy integrate the bracket minus 1 you're having the bracket power plus 1 become negative 1 divide by the negative 1 differentiate the thing inside the bracket you have a 1 so divide it by 1 then end up you have something like this okay all right then of course if you uh, want to avoid all the careless mistake or whatsoever right usually for me like, i would prefer to simplify everything first into a easier into a method or maybe into the steps that is easier to understand or safer okay so i will have negative three and then over x plus two power one then the limit is still 4 and 0. Okay, right. So we have completed the integration part now. And now we want to express our answer become a plus b ln c. So first step, we just try to substitute the value 4 first. Okay, substitute the value 4 for the first term here. 4 times 2 is 8. I get a 9. Okay, so I will have half ln 9. And then after that, for the second term here, I'm having 2. And then ln 4 plus 2 is a 6. Then for this third part here, I'm having negative 3 divided by 6 also. Okay, so after substitute the uh, value 4, I want to substitute the value 0 now. Substitute 0 into the first term here, I'm having half ln 1. Okay, then into the second term, I'm having negative 2 ln 2. And for the third term here, I will be having uh, 3 over 2. Okay, and now I have to think a way to solve my details here, all the details here. Okay, there are many ways to, to simplify, to get this answer basically. All right, so I will just give you a suggestion, okay, using my steps here, so that um see whether you can understand or not. All right, uh, because I want to have A plus B ln C, right, Um, I tend to combine all the ln together. But if I want to combine all the loan together, right, I have to make sure that all the number in front, I pull it to the back. So that means all the half, right, I will pull it to the back, become 9 power half. So when I'm having 9 power half, uh, that means square root 9, uh, square root 9, I will get a loan 3. So for the second term here, the 2, if I pull it to the back, I will have 6 square, 6 power 2. So 6 power 2, actually I'm having loan 36. So my aim now is to uh, move back all the value. Okay, in front of the lawn so that I can make them into a simple lawn like this lawn 3 minus lawn 36 then later I can further simplify that combine all the lawn together right okay so 3 over 6 is 1 over 2 lawn 1 I'm having a 0 then I have a plus then lawn 2 square so 2 square is a lawn 4 then plus 3 over 2 Okay, so let's focus on these two constant first without the ln. Eh? So negative half plus 3 over 2, I already get a value which is an integer, right? It will be equals to 1. And after that, I want to combine the remaining ln. Eh? So you're having three terms of ln here, ln 3 minus ln 36 and also plus ln 4. Okay, so for to combine them, right, what I will do is I will put a plus first. All the uh, lawn, the term with the lawn uh, is positive, then I will put it on top, that means it belongs to numerator, and I multiply them together. If I'm having negative, okay, in front of the lawn, basically it means that uh, the value, I need to make it become denominator when I combine them. So lawn 3, lawn 3 is positive lawn 3, right? So the 3 will be on top, plus lawn 4. So it is a plus, that means you have to put it on top also. So you multiply the 3 together with the 4, then we divided by 36. Okay, then again, further simplify it. 12 divided by 36, you're having 1 over 3. And it this for this step, uh, it looks like we already get an answer, right? But if you refer again, uh, there are requests in the question, they are asking for a plus b ln c, where these three values should be integer. So that means something wrong somewhere. Uh, this is not my final answer yet, uh, that fulfill the question. So I need to further simplify them. Okay, ln 1 
minus ln 3. Okay, so from here, I can separate ln 1 divided by 3 become ln 1 minus ln 3. And then what's the value for ln 1? So ln 1, basically, you get a 0, right? And if you write out your final answer, it should be 1 minus ln 3. So I think this is actually the final answer that the question requires. Okay, because from here, you can see very clearly that your A is 1, B is negative 1, and then C is 3. Okay, all right, so this is how we solve question number eight. Okay, then now we come to question number 9. The constant A is such that um, it is fulfilled this equation. Then they want to show that A is half ln 4A plus 2. Okay, then if I look at this equation here, the integration part, right, I'm having the product of two functions. So when I want to apply integration, I have to use integration by part. Okay, so for integration by part, so first of all, I need to analyze first. Huh? So the x here is belongs to algebra. And then the e here is actually the exponential, right? According to the rules that we learned earlier, so we have to use the rule L-I-A-T-E, where if your group is higher, then you make it become the u. When the, num the group of the function is lower, then you make it as dv. So I think very obvious here, like a is the algebra, which is higher than e, right? So I will let u equals to the x in our equation here. And then after that, the dv will be equals to the remaining terms. So I'm having e power negative 2x dx. Okay, so after you decide the correct group already, for the u part, you need to differentiate it. For the dv part, you need to integrate it to apply them in the integration by part formula later. Okay, so when I differentiate u with respect to x, I'm having du over dx equals to 1. Integrate dv, actually there's a value 1 here, all right, just that we didn't write out. So integrate 1 dv, I'm having a v. Integrate e power negative 2x, I'm having e power negative 2x. After that, you differentiate the power, you get negative 2. So you have to divide by negative 2. Okay, so after I settle the part for u and v, and now I want to start applying the integration by part. Okay, so for this integration by part, they already tell us the result. The integration here will be equal to 1 over 8. Okay, so I'm having 0a, then x e power negative 2x dx equals to half. Okay, so now our aim is to integrate the left hand side here, okay, by using integration by part, and then we slowly rephrase our answer and steps uh, into this as a final answer. Okay, all right, so we will start. Okay, so we can have this one. To apply integration by part, uh, the formula is uv minus integration of v du. So what is your u? u is x. What is your v? v is this one, right? So if I rewrite it better uh, in a better way, then I will have negative half and then x and then e power negative 2x. So this is uv. So when I have uv, I have to substitute the limit a and 0 into the x later. Okay, so I'm having uv minus v du. Okay, so minus v du, what is the v now? Okay, so for the v, I'm having this, which is negative half, e power negative 2x, and then du from here, you can see du equals to 1 dx, right? So you're having a dx at the back. Okay, so maybe before I forget, uh, I will try to write out the integration formula first. Okay, so this is the integration by part formula. Okay, all right. And then, uh, so I'm having uv minus v du. And now I will let it equals to half, uh, equals to 1 over eta on the right hand side. Okay, then now I want to slowly simplify all my equation and step here. Okay, for first term here, I try to substitute the a into the equation. I'm having negative half a and then e, power negative 2a. Then I, I want to substitute the value 0 also. When I substitute the value 0 into the x, uh, the whole term here will become 0. So this whole part, I only have this after I substitute the limit a and 0. Okay, then for the next part, I want to integrate it. So again, before I integrate anything, I would prefer to simplify my equation first to avoid careless mistake.
Okay, so this is what I have. Therefore, it will be very easy for me to integrate. Okay, so integrate e power negative 2x, I will have e negative 2x, then divide it by negative 2. And I get a and 0, that equals to 1 over a. Okay, then again, further simplify it. Having negative 1 over 4, then I want to substitute the value a inside, I'm having e power negative 2a. Substitute 0 inside, e power 0, you get a 1. So make sure that you put in a 1, it is not 0 for e power 0, okay? This is a common mistake that students usually will do. Alright, so now I'm having something like this. Okay, then again, before I rephrase it, right, I try to expand everything first. Okay, so maybe I want to group all the values together. Lah. So, 1 over 4, I bring the 1 over 8 over, so minus 1 over 8. Okay, so 1 over 4 minus 1 over 8, basically I'm having plus 1 over 8. Okay, then uh, I feel that if I have the fraction like this, uh, it's very hard for me to rephrase my solution. So what I prefer to do now is I try to multiply the whole equation with 8. So when I multiply with 8, right, all the fraction uh, will disappear. So that means for the first term here, half times 8, I will have 4. Then for this second term here, 1 over 4 times 8, I'm getting 2. Then 8 times 8, I get a 1. Okay, then what will be the next step? So maybe for the next step, I will want to bring my terms out with the e power negative 2a to one side first so that I get all the positive value, positive sign. Then factorize out the e. Okay, so I think I'm very close to the answer already because I already have this 4a plus 2. Lah. Okay, then for this e power negative 2a, right, you can actually rewrite it become 1 over e power 2a. So I will want to bring it up, become the numerator on the left hand side. Okay, so in my equation, I don't want the e, lah. so to make the 2a come down, become the number, I will take long for both sides. So 2a log e equals to log 4a plus 2. Okay, and then log e, of course, you, you should know that log e is equals to 1, right? So from here, you can get the equation that they want you to show, lah, where a equals to half log 4a plus 2. Okay, so this is what uh, we have uh, for part A in question number 9. Okay, then let's continue to part B. Okay, so for part B, they want you to verify by calculation that A lies between 0 0.5 and also the 1. Okay, so uh, to prove that A lies between 0 0.5 and 1, uh, there are many methods here. So for me, I'm using the sign change method. So for sign change method, right, my original equation that they want us to prove just now is this one. So a equals to half ln 4a plus 2. Then to use sign change method, uh, I will actually want to move all the variable to one side. So that I can make this whole equation become a function uh, at one side, where I'm having half and then ln 4a plus 2 minus a. Okay, then... To find the sign change, I need to substitute 0 0.5 into the equation and also I need to substitute the 1 into the equation. If I substitute 0 0.5 into the equation, 
my answer is 0 0.193 correct to three significant figure if i substitute the one into the function then i will have negative 0 0.104 which is a negative value so you can see very clearly that this is a positive value and this is a negative value right when you can see the sign change happen between f0.5 and x uh, f1 then it means that the root or the a actually lies between 0 0.5 and also the one okay so you can make a simple conclusion on this uh. So sign change can be seen, and therefore we are we can conclude that the a actually lies between zero point five and also one. Okay, so this is what we have for part B. All right, then after that we proceed to part C. Okay, so for part C, they want us to use the iterative formula based on the equation A to determine A correct to two decimal places. Give the result of each iteration to four decimal places. So again, our equation in part A is A equals to half, then ln 4A plus 2. Okay, and then... To use the iterative formula to find out the answer, right? You need to use your calculator and key in the formula on the right hand side. Okay, so this is the formula that you need to key in, in your calculator so that we can continue with the iteration later. I need to key in the calculator with this formula on the right hand side. Okay, so I'm having half. So I'm having ln 4a plus 2 ln and then 4a. A, I will replace it by using the x, uh, then plus 2, close bracket. And then um, we are having divided by 2. Okay, all right. Then now you need the first, uh, the, the initial value to start with. Lah. So the initial value, you can refer, you can use any value that you like. But basically, we we'll refer to the um, number that is close to the root. Lah. So we know that actually our root is between 0 0.5 and 1, right? So it is actually a good hint for us to use the initial value from here. You can use 0 0.5, you can use a 1, or you can use any value between that. Alright, so for me, I'm setting my first initial value as a 1. For you yourself, you can try any other value. Lah. Basically, our final answer will be the same. Okay, ah? alright. So, now, we want to find out the A2. So to get the A2, you need to substitute the 1 into your iterative formula. Okay, then try to press calculator and see what's the value that you get. So that means now uh, you can press the calculator sign and then we'll key in the first value which is the 1, right? So key in 1 and then you press the equal sign. Okay, so the first value that you get should be 0 0.89587973346. Uh. It is a long value. But for this question, they're asking for all decimal places. Therefore, we are having 0 0.8959. So I will put in 8959. 8959 sorry 8959 okay after that i want to continue to get my next value for the a so to get the next value for a i press calculate again key in the a2 value which is 0 0.8959 okay then i press equal sign one more time i will have 8599 so I write out the answer correct to four decimal places, 8599. Okay, we will repeat this process until we get the repeated value for two decimal places. Alright, okay, then we continue to x4. To get the x4, you press calculate again, key in the value that you get just now at a3, which is 0 0.8599. Press equal sign and you get 8469. So 0 0.8469. Okay, so I can see that the two-digit values are not repeated yet, right? So I will just continue the process again. So calculate, key in the value 0 0.8469, then press equal sign, 8421. And now my fifth value is 8421. Okay, then if you look at the A4 and A5, right? Although these two digit, uh, these two decimal number is 0 0.84 and A4, right? But when you correct it, right? Uh, 0 0.846 are uh, correct to two decimal places, you will get 0 0.85. Then this one, you're having 0 0.84. So that means the two 
decimal places answer are not repeated yet. So you still need to continue further to get the next value A6. Okay, again, press the calculate. Key in the value 0 0.8421. Press the equal sign and you get 0 0.8403. So 0 0.8403. Okay, so if you double check uh, the answer for two decimal places, right? This one will give you 0 0.84 and this one will also give you 0 0.84. That means you are having the repeated value already, right? So from here, basically you can tell them that the root or the value of A should be equals to 0 0.84, correct, to two decimal places. Okay, but when you want to find out all the iterative uh, iteration here you have to ensure that you are keeping it or maybe you show it in four decimal places according to the request from the question okay all right so this is how we solve question number nine okay so we are now at the last question question number 10 um, we are given a polynomial denoted by px they want us to show that x plus 3 is a factor of px Okay, so um, for this one to prove that x plus 3 is a factor maybe I can use the factor theorem to Proof. Okay, I know that my polynomial equals to this one. Ah. Okay, so to apply the uh, uh, the factor theorem, right? I'm having the factor x plus three. If I let x plus three equals to zero, then my x will be equals to negative three. So that means I want to substitute the value x equals to negative three into the polynomial, and I want to see what is the value that I get after I substitute it. If I get a value, that particular value will be the remainder, which is a remainder theorem. Like we get a result. We are using the result for remainder theorem. But if we substitute the negative 3 into the polynomial and eventually I get a 0, that means uh, I, I have no remainder when I divide it by x plus 3. Okay, so this is how we solve, uh, to how we show it. Uh. Okay, so substitute negative 3 into the equation here. I'm having negative 3 power 3 and then plus 5 negative 3 square plus 31 negative 3 and also plus 75 okay so when you are trying to simplify all the value here i'm having negative 27 and then the second term is plus 45 the third term is negative 93 and the last term is 75 okay then you just try to press calculator and to help you a little bit so you get a zero actually so from here, since I get a zero, that means there's no remainder like, when I divide the polynomial by using x plus 3. Therefore, I can say that the x plus 3 is basically a factor of px. Okay, so this is how we solve it for part A. Alright, so let's have a look for part number B. Now they want us to show that uh, z equals to negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i is the root of pz equals to 0. Just now we are having px. Uh, so now they change it become pz. And they say that when px, pz equals to 0, right? The one of the root is this one. Okay, so to show this one, basically we are having um, two different methods here. Or maybe more than two, more than two methods. Uh, there are a few methods here. The first method is you can try to substitute the z into the polynomial also and you get a zero so if you get a zero then basically it means that the z is the root okay huh? all right another method is some student will carry out the long division where they take px or pz divided by z plus three after that they will get a quadratic factor then they try to solve the quadratic factor that's another method okay so there are a few methods that you can try to consider like if you want Okay, so for me, I'm using the substitution. Uh. So let's say I'm having pz, right? So pz is actually equals to uh, this one. Okay, just I need to change all the x become z. So I'm having z power 3 plus 5z square. Okay, then plus 31z plus 75. Okay, so since they said now, uh, the negative 1 plus 2 square 6i is the root of this polynomial, right, equals to 0. So what I need to do now is I substitute the z into my polynomial. Okay, so I'm having power 3, right? So that means I'm having 3 brackets here.
a then plus 5 power 2, z power 2. So this is what I have for z power 2. Okay, then plus 31, z. Plus 75. Okay, so this question, right, basically it is not hard, but when you want to expand all the bracket for the z, you need to be very, very careful. Try to avoid the careless mistake. Okay, so negative 1 times negative 1, you get a 1. Then this times this, you get negative 2 square root 6i. Then again, another negative 2 square root 6i. So square root 6 times square root 6, you get a 6 times 4. So 6 times 4, you get 24. So 24 i squared means negative 24. Okay, then I'm still having the third bracket here. And then for these two brackets also, I have 1 minus 2 square root 6i minus 2 square root 6i. 4 times 6 is 24 times i squared is negative 24 again. So minus 31 plus 62 square root 6i then plus 75. Okay, then now I need to simplify this. I'm having negative 4 square root 6i. Then 1 minus 24, you have negative 23. Then multiply with the last bracket, negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i. Okay, so basically for um, what we have here, right, we just need to make sure that we don't do any careless mistake. Huh? Okay, the, the step might be a bit tedious, okay, because when you want to expand everything here, you can see it's quite long. Okay, but you just need to make sure that you try to expand everything very carefully. Okay, so negative 31 plus 75, I will have 44. So continue here, I will have 44, and then plus 62 square root 6i. Okay, I expand these two brackets again. Negative 4 times 1, I get a positive, right? So I'm having 4 square root 6i. Then 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so I'm having negative 8. Negative 8 times 6. Okay, I have negative 48. And then negative 48, nah, I multiply with i squared, which is um, negative 1, right? So I have positive 48. Okay, 23 times 1, you get 23. Then this one, you have 23 times 2. 23 times 2, you have 46. So minus 46, then square root 6i. Then minus 20, square root 6i. Okay, then you take 23 times 5, you have minus 115. Okay, then plus 44, plus 62, square root 6i. Okay, so now we try to analyze it slowly. Yeah? I'm having 4 square root 6i minus 46 square root 6i minus 20 square root 6i and then plus 62 square root 6i. So what do I have after I simplify all of them? So 4 minus 46 minus 20 then plus 62. Basically, I get a 0. Okay, so you can try to simplify this part. You realize that it is equal to 0. And after that, you simplify all the number here. 48 plus 23 minus 115 plus 44. So what do I get? Okay, if we didn't do any class basic right, we also get a zero here. Therefore, our final answer for this one is zero. Okay, so you realize that when you substitute the z into this equation, right? Okay, into the equation here, into the polynomial, I should say. Okay, into the polynomial, then you realize that it is equals to zero. That means what? That means all oh, z equals to negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i is a root, okay, for pz equals to 0. Okay, so this is how we solve it and prove it. Okay, uh, uh, only 3 marks is given, but basically that's, um, it is not very hard, okay, it just looks a bit, a little bit tedious only. Alright, you just need to expand everything here slowly. Make sure that you don't do any careless mistake. Then by right, you should get a zero after you substitute the value as expand and simplify them. Okay, and after that, for part C. So for part C, they want us to find the complex number z uh, when we are having this one. 
the probability of oh, sorry the the polynomial of z square equals to zero. Just now we are having p z equals to zero, and now we are having p z square equals to zero. Okay, so before I can solve this part of the question, right, I will want to go back to part number b just now. Okay, for part a, for this polynomial, I know that I'm having one real root which is x equals to negative three. This is the real root, right? And then for the second part, from here I know that I have one complex root which is negative 1 plus 2 square root uh, 6i. Okay, so that means uh, if I try to summarize uh, when pz equals to 0, right? What is the value of z that I have? I have three roots here. The first root is from first part where x equals to negative 3. So now I'm having z equals to negative 3. The second root is the one that we proved just now. Negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i. And what will be the third root? Okay, so for the third root, right, we actually have a rule where if all the coefficients for the polynomial are real numbers, then the root appear in conjugate pair. So you can see that my coefficient for this polynomial, right, all are real number. 3, 5, 31, 75, all are real number. Therefore, I know that the other root for this polynomial will be the conjugate of z. So the conjugate of z means that it will be negative 1, then minus 2 square root 6i. Okay, so for this particular polynomial, right, pz equals to 0, I'm having 3 roots or 3 value of z, which is negative 3, negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i, negative 1 minus 2 square root 6i. Okay, then if we try to observe this whole thing, Okay, if you try to observe this whole thing into part number C, right? Okay, so let's have a look. Huh? For part B, we are solving the polynomial z equals to 0. And now they want to replace the z by using z squared. Okay, the polynomial are the same, but you replace all the z using z squared. That means uh, your z square now, the roots uh, become z square equals to negative 3. Okay, then z square equals to negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i. And also the z square equals to negative 1 minus 2 square root 6i. Okay, then for this question again, I get all the uh, value for z square because I replaced the z by using z square here, right, in part number C. And what they want us to find, they want us to find the complex number z. So to find the complex number z, you need to solve the three answer here one by one. Okay, so we'll start from the simple one first. z square is negative 3, therefore z is basically plus minus square root negative 3. And then in the complex number, right, you can write the, plus, uh, the square root negative 3 become square root 3i. So these are the first two answers for the z that I can obtain. Okay, then now to get the second value for the z, you need to solve this equation. z squared is equals to negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i, right? And now I want to find the square root of negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i. How to find out the square root of negative 1 plus 2 square root 6i? Okay, so basically I will still get the complex number which is a plus bi and then you try to bring the square to the other side square root becomes square right so i'm having a plus bi square then i try to expand my right hand side here eventually i'm having a square minus b square i want to group them together so that this is the real part then plus 2abi so this is the imaginary part Okay, after that, I want to compare the real part with the real part. So this is the real part. This is also the real part here. Okay, uh, so I will compare a square minus b square. It will be equal to negative 1. Okay, so a square minus b square equals to negative 1. This is my first equation. And the second equation, I want to compare uh, imaginary with imaginary part. So 2 square root 6 equals to 2ab. Okay, so 2 square root 6 equals to 2ab. So from here, I want to 
make b in terms of a lah. so b equals to square root 6 over a and this is my second equation to solve the simultaneous equation i sub, sub equation number 2 into the 1 okay so if i substitute into the 1 i'm having a square minus square root 6 over a square equals to negative 1 Okay, so I'm having a square minus 6 over a square equals to negative 1 also. Okay, then after that, I'm having a power 4 plus a square minus 6 equals to 0. So from here, you can see that I'm getting a quadratic form equation. So in terms of a square, right? Okay, so negative 6, I want to have positive 3 and also minus 2 okay so my a square equals to 2 therefore my a is equals to plus minus square root 2 then for this part i will ignore it because a square equals to negative 3 then i don't need to continue to find out the a lah. because if i found the a later right when i substitute back into the equation just now the answer that i get will be actually a repetition of this one of this part so you don't need to waste time and solve them. Alright. Okay. So after you get A equals to plus minus half already. Okay. So now continue to find the B. A equals to positive square root 2. What is the value of B? So you substitute it into the equation number 2 which is more straightforward. Huh? So B equals to square root 6 divided by square root 2. And therefore your B is actually uh, 6 divided by 2. You get a 3. Right. So you get square root 3. And then when your a is equals to negative square root 2, then your b will be equals to negative square root 3. So if you try to list out the answer for the z here, right? Your z is having this value where first one is square root 2 plus square root 3i. Another root will be negative square root 2 minus square root 3i. Okay? Or maybe some of the marking scheme or maybe some solution, huh, they will show it in the shorter way where you can write it become plus minus bracket square root 2 plus square root 3i this one also can okay so i get another two root for this equation okay so just now the first two roots was this one ah. the first two roots was this one z equals to plus minus square root 3i then I solve the second equation here where I get these two answers as the root. And now I need to solve the third equation. So basically the steps are, are more or less the same for the third equation here. Okay, so I'm having square root. Negative 1 minus 2 square root 6i equals to a plus bi. I still get a complex number when I take the square root of complex number. Then negative 1 minus 2 square root 6i. I will get... Uh, I simplify straight away. Lah. So I'm having a square minus b square plus 2abi. Like how you expand it just now. Still the same concept and idea. Compare the real part with the real part. This is your real part, right? Therefore, you're having a square minus b square equals to negative 1. So this is your third equation if you want to make it as a sign. Okay, so this is the third equation. And after that, you compare, right, the imaginary with the imaginary part. Okay, so if you try to compare the imaginary with imaginary, oh, you will get um, 2ab equals to negative 2 square root 6. Then from here, we will get b equals to negative square root 6 over a. And this is my fourth equation. Again, to solve this one, I will substitute the fourth equation, the fourth equation into the third equation. Okay, so I'm having a square minus negative square root 6 over a, and then I square it equals to negative 1. Okay, then if I try to simplify them, I'm having a negative 6, then plus a square equals to 0. Okay, so again, I get another quadratic equation in this. So I try to solve them, factorize them, and solve them. And you can see that it is actually equals to what we get just now, right? 
quite similar. Okay, so I try to solve for a equals to 2, then I ignore this part. Okay, for a square equals to 2, you take the square root by yourself, so you're having plus minus square root 2. Then again, I want to find out the value for b. So when a equals to positive square root 2, right, what is the value of b? So to find the value of b, you substitute into the equation number 4. Okay, so negative square root 6 divided by square root 2, you're having negative square root 3. And then when a equals to negative square root 2, the b value that you get should be a positive value square root 3. So from here, right, that means you get another 2 value for the z, uh, which is the root. Uh, it will be equals to square root 2 minus square root 3i. Okay, then negative square root 2 plus square root 3i. Or, again, you can rephrase it in the more simplified way where it is actually plus minus square root 2 minus square root 3i. Okay, right. So basically, you already solve all the equation here for the z square. So you're having six root. Basically, you can see that yeah, this is the first two roots, second and the third, uh, sorry, third and the fourth, and also the five and the six. So you are having six roots in total. Then if you double check and see, uh, when you're having pz square, right? When you replace the x or the z uh, by using z square in the original equation. Uh, this one okay you're having x power 3 right when you substitute z square power 3 uh, you'll get z power 6 when you're having the highest power the value is a 6 right basically you're having 6 roots one okay so we should also uh, verify that our solution here is correct uh? that means uh, when you try to solve pz square equals to 0 you should have 6 answer eventually so this is the first two answer the third and the fourth and also the five and the six and to avoid um the possibility that maybe the examiner not able to see your answer clearly right usually i will remind students again if possible or if can try to group all your answer at last line again so i'm having z equals to plus minus i square root three and then plus minus square root 2 plus square root 3i and also the last one will be plus minus square root 2 minus square root 3i okay so basically this is how we solve this question All right so it might the step might be longer okay but uh, to me when solving it it is not hard to understand Alright, so you might have other method in your mind uh, to solve it. So you can just try and see whether you're able to get all this answer or not. So this is just a suggestion of how are we going to solve this question. But basically, they might have more than one method on this. Alright, okay, so thank you so much for watching this video and we will end the video here. Okay, thank you very much for watching.